The subject of today is we're talking about depression and children having voices. As you guys know, I tend to advocate for children first on the Soto Podcast channel. You guys can check me out at the Soto Podcast. So that's primarily what I tend to talk about over there on that channel is advocating for children. So I thought this was a really interesting conversation that we could have on this channel talking about children, the struggles that they go through, because I'm going to tell you guys, children go through a lot of things that they may or may not be able to articulate. Is it, does that sound about right, Lyric? That sounds right to me. Yeah, so, you know, so we have a couple of things lined up here for you guys. If you guys would, again, hit that thumbs up for me. Where do you want, where do you want to start? Like, what, which, uh, which point would you like to start with? We'll kind of go from there. I think I'm going to start with the point of just knowing when your child is suffering through the passion and if you're able to see those signs and catch those signs. Um, so what I'm going to dive into, the reason why this topic is most important to me is because I'm a mother and I'm a mother of children. My youngest child right now is uh, 13 years old. So all my other children go up from there, my oldest being 22 years old. And um, depression hit my youngest son, who is now 19, extremely hard. And I wanted to say, I want to say that I was not the his signs they were there and i was ignoring them because i think that i just wanted happiness for my children so bad that i i want to say that i was that parent that kind of ignored it even though i'm a strong talker i'm very involved i kind of just didn't want what was so to be so mm -hmm. so if uh if you know parents are out there maybe they can understand so the first sign that i want to the obvious sign that i want to talk about is uh teenagers always you know distance themselves from their parents because they're trying to figure out who they are and yeah. they're trying to establish themselves so they'll distance themselves if you start noticing a stream amount of distance and they don't no longer want to eat with you they no longer want to speak with you um you find them just alone for the majority of the time of their life there's something wrong with that you need to go to them and speak to them and try to figure out where their head is because what i have learned with my son is that he was developing anxiety about becoming a grown man this is something that i didn't even know existed this is something that i thought that i had talked to him about mm -hmm. but i also just want to touch on the fact that i feel like we as parents sometimes we dictate what our children what we want our children to do and who we want our children to be and so instead of allowing them to talk to us and allowing them to tell us this is hurting me or this is scaring me, we brush them away. And we we tend to, you know, tell them that that's not what they're feeling or maybe they just need to sleep it off or, you know, they're too young to feel that way. Um, so we brush it off. Would you agree with that, DJ? Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And this is what I wanted to ask you because I'm just saying we didn't all been young, we didn't all been teenagers. I mean, going through puberty, that stuff is hard, man. When you're trying to learn yourself, find out who you are and, and navigate life, navigate your friends, navigate these girls, body parts changing and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And so there's, there's a lot of pressure that comes with it. Um, when I was growing up, drugs was a real big thing. So you had a lot of peer pressure out there and how you were viewed among your peers made a big difference as to a lot of the decisions that you tend to make because I mean, you don't want to be seen as the outcast. You don't want to be seen as somebody that ain't cool, that ain't down and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, so for me, it was definitely a struggle to just try to make sure and not only do the things that my parents would try to preach at home and I, cause I didn't want to get in no trouble, but at the same time, you want to keep your friends, you know, I don't mean, I don't know how you, how your childhood was growing up, but it was rough trying to kind of navigate as far as like your teenage years. What, what, what do you think? Do you remember when you was, when you first hit that 13, 14, 15 years? I absolutely remember those years. Um, I was a, a PK, so both of my parents are pastors. My mother and my father is pastors. Um, so it was hard trying to, you know, play it cool. And I will, I feel like uh, for children, children back in the days, it was really hard because you did have to be who you were. It wasn't like it was when I was growing up. Um, you know, I'm a woman in my 40s now, so it wasn't like it uh, when I was growing up, you just had to be you. That was just it. Nowadays, there's so many ways that children can change their self. And I think social media plays into that a lot as well. Um, you know, 
one thing that I, I, I feel like I, I sometimes I try to shield my children from a lot of things. So I didn't give uh, my children an opportunity to play around with social media because I was so scared of it. Mm. So my son that is 19, he actually has never had a Facebook page. Um, he just now, I just now allowed him to open an Instagram account. So he's not very popular um, on Instagram. And so I feel like for um, lack of a better better statement, I feel like I jaded him. I feel like I didn't give him the opportunity to discover things. I was just telling him, be, because I didn't like it, I was telling him he couldn't do it. And so I just shaded him from it. And so what I didn't realize was that I was creating a lot of the pains that he was going through in school, a lot of the things that he was being made fun of for, I was creating those things and I thought that I was protecting him. Well, this, this is the crazy part because you talk about social media, but guess what life was like when we was growing up? We had no social media. <laughs> You're, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if you can remember back that far. You know, sometimes I got to knock the dust off my brain, you know what I'm saying, to kind of remember what it was like to realize that we didn't even have cell phones and smartphones. We didn't even start having text messaging until 2005. And it's crazy when you think about it, you just think it's just stuff that's been around forever. But back in the day, like when we was kids, like you had to go outside, you had to go and make friends. Like there was a lot, there was a lot more um, value in human interaction. You know what I'm saying? Which could, which could have positive and negative effects. Like I'll give you an example. Like as far as positive, it could be a positive thing when you actually have those human interactions. So it's it's not a foreign thing for you to go to your school, go to work, or be, a, be around other people or, or maybe around businesses, or if you go into a restaurant or anything, you've had these interactions with people. You know what you can say, what you can't say. You know, some of the things you might say might get, get you get you beat up. You know what I'm saying? So you kind of learn those little intric intricacies. I, I, I get tongue tied with that word, intricacies. That when it, when it, when it comes to, to dealing with people and stuff like that, that's kind of some of the things you learn. And I always wonder, with these kids growing up nowadays in the social media age, in the internet age, I don't know what you guys think in the chat, man. Y'all gotta let me know what y'all think. I mean, I know it's a couple people here and ain't, ain't, you know, a whole bunch of people here, but I definitely wanna hear what everybody has to say. But my whole thing is in the social media age, cause I have an 11 year old, getting ready to be 12 this year. It's kind of scary, but that's why daddy keep the strap. You know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, I always wonder like really how is it impacting them? You know what I'm saying? As far as, as far as um, how they deal with people, where their mindset is, how they process things, are they not processing things? You know what I mean? And, but I've always kept a really, really close relationship with my daughter. I try to tell people this story all the time. Shout out to Crystal Chan, my daughter, my baby, right? So I was with her the moment that she was born, like cut the umbilical cord. I was with her in the warming room, gave her her first feedings. Daddy was there, all of that stuff. And I'm gonna tell you guys, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, and, and I, I, I even took the show in a whole different direction. So you gotta kinda keep me on track. But nonetheless, the fact that I've been in my baby's life since day one, and I've gotten a chance to talk to her, nurture her, grow her, um, be able to talk with her, get her to understand reasons, concepts, and things like that. And, and, I, and I get a chance to ask her questions and see if she actually is under if she actually understands what I'm talking about. So with her, I don't too much really worry about it, but I definitely worry about her peers because more times than none, you generally have to worry about the people outside of your family as opposed to the people inside of your family. It just depends on what type of people you're around. I hope that in a roundabout way, I hope that kind of makes sense with regard to children and their feelings. Because I'm just saying, like, I, I did a, um, a story recently where um, I think her name was Renaya Wright. If I'm, I don't know how I remember that name. I told you my memory's bad. Renaya yeah. Wright was the fifth grader that got, literally got her brains beat out. That, that girl was murdered by a girl that was two, almost about two years older than her, but she had failed the fifth grade twice. My goodness. So if you think about it, when we're talking about children, you know what I'm saying? They they can they can either be some some great individuals or they could be some deadly individuals and I think a lot of it has to de determine how they feel on the inside how were they raised so you could imagine let me see somebody says social media has killed the conversation what do you want to say about that I I agree with that because I could take this in a lot of different directions I absolutely agree you know to the person who made that comment I agree because nowadays when you can comment with emojis. Um, and you don't have to use words. words. 
that takes away a lot of things you know a lot of expressions a lot a lot of spelling i mean there's a lot of children nowadays who just can't spell because they're not made to do the things that we were made to do growing up i think that that the values and the things that we had to get us through um to becoming adults they miss a whole lot of steps so i feel like we as parents if we're not there to you know buy them and and put back the things that society and social media has taken away from our children because if you look at it now, society is fast. You, They want you to do everything fast. You know, it started off with fast food and then it just transpired from there. So now society is like pushing everything out there, like let's get it done, let's get it done, let's get it done. So they're essentially pushing these children into adulthood and the parents are rolling along with it and not realizing that we're missing so many steps that are leading our children into this sad state, into depression, into being okay with wanting to die. We literally have challenges online of children doing challenges of, you know, Romeo and Juliet, you know, killing themselves, thinking that it's something to be applauded. Oh, I think I heard about that. They're not even gonna be here to see that applause. So wow. all this attention that you beg for in life, you literally let your brain and let the world trick you into leaving this world and you not arrive until your full potential. So, you know, my mother always used to say, you know, turn your listening ears on. And so that's what I try to do now with my children. I try to make sure that I have that listening ear on. And I also try to make sure that I don't listen to just have a response thinking that I know, you know, what they need and I know more than them. I want to listen to actually hear what you're saying and then be able to respond to you appropriately. And I don't think a lot of parents give children that ground. They don't give them that ground. What do you think about that? I, I agree with you. And this is one thing that I'm sure that if you've watched my show before, um, one of the things that I talk about is having children reciprocate the things that you give to them. So my point, yes. my, my point by saying that is I've always said, because people, I've heard people say this both ways. So we need to make the correction. Now I've heard people say, you give me respect and I'll give it back to you. And it is backwards. You give yeah. respect. And so whenever I meet a kid, I've always told women that I've dated that when, when, if, you know, cause obviously I'm sorry, but you know, but we have a high birth rate outside of wedlock in the black community. So anytime I tend to date women, they tend to got kids, right? They tend to got kids. Yes, I said that right. They tend to got kids. So I when, have right got. <laughs> so I tend so so I so whenever I meet the kids, I normally will always approach them with the utmost respect. I'm like, hi, my name is Jay. What's your name? You know, it's a pleasure to meet you. And I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to meet you. You know, like like I talk to them like that and I've watched kids literally melt like butter. Like, like, I mean, like, um, I, I don't want to talk about any specific situations. I ain't trying to tell them myself, you know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, I've watched kids gravitate to that, you know, over yeah. the, over the years. And the more that you tend to show kids respect, they'll give it right back to you. I don't, I can't remember any asshole kids I've ever been around. Not just because I'm a man, not be ju just because I could beat them up if I wanted to, or take a belt and whoop them with it or anything like that. I think the fact that I've been a camp counselor, I've been around a lot of random kids and, and instilled these same type of values on those kids. And I've watched them all behave in a similar fashion. They tend to act better if they get respect. Respect has to be earned, but I believe that if you give it, if everybody's giving respect, it will reciprocate on itself. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. I believe that you do have to show children respect. And I think that sometimes as parents, we forget that. We feel like, oh, I had you, you know, you do what I say when I say it. And I just don't think that we should lead with that. I don't think parents should lead with that. How can you, how can you not show the child respect when they're learning? They just got here. They just came to this earth. You have to teach them things. They're not, they don't already know. Um, and so I've heard you mention on your show before that diving right in to whoop them or or hit them, you know, it's ne it's it's never a good thing because that's like hitting a three year old for. I'll just use the example of licking a tree. Let's say you take them to the park and they run up to this big old thing that's beautiful to them, 
and they're learning all their senses so they lick the tree so the parent runs up behind them and they just start whooping them you don't do that you don't do that but they never tell them why they don't do that you don't even explain to them that this is a tree the tree has life on it the tree is here for this reason it's not here for you to lick let me explain the tree to you and so i think that we we go through parenting that way instead of showing them different things and talking to them and getting them to understand life in general and the little qualms about life we just go at it hollering and we and then we holler and we expect them to be good people when they grow up and how can they be good people when we tore their eardrums up i got one for you i don't know how you grew up you got to tell me miss lyric like did you grow up getting spankings was, was that a normal thing in your household I honestly did not grow up getting spankings. I I will say spankings, that, whoopings, beatings, hangings, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> running over with the carins. <laughs> my mom, um, how can I say this politely? Because if she ever sees this show, mommy, I love you. Um, everything was like sunshine and flowers and daisies to her. So sometimes I wish I would have had that more, you did this wrong, so get it right. But she's like, sweetie, let's let's bake cookies and, and let me tell you about this. And it was just mm. like, oh my God, like I spilled this cup of milk on purpose. Oh, so you had one of those mothers. <laughs> it was a flower child. I was just like, oh my God, can you... Like scream at me now. My dad wasn't. My dad wasn't like that. My dad, he was always working, and when he got off of work and stuff, he was he was tired, so he was irritated. So he would yell at you. So, um, but my mom, yeah, the sun bloomed on everything. If she thought I was mad at her, I had a new teddy bear the next morning. So I did not grow up getting whoopings. I want to. I'm sorry. I don't mean to take over your show, but I really want to take this in so many different directions. First of all, okay. let me answer Notorious B, and, I, and we will we will be answering you guys' questions in the chat. So if you have a question for Lyric or if you have a question for me, absolutely feel free to type it in the chat. If you guys would, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. It will share our stream and let everybody know that we are live up in this thing. You dig? Right? But uh, to Notorious B, he said, why, why does disrespect mean more than respect? And I believe that's just the, the, the amount of principles that you were gained that you were uh that you were uh I almost said learned that doesn't make any sense it's it's the it's the type of principles that were taught to you at home and, and the things that we learn at home are the things that we generally tend to pass down generationally if that makes sense so if we think that that um it depends on and it also depends on your uh of your uh of your perception of respect and disrespect can you agree with can you agree with that lyric I can agree with that. And I think that in today's society, um, Tommy does string once on how they how how society has rotated bad words for good words or and then they and then they reverse them when they want to make it good for them. So disrespect nowadays, you know, is such a it's such a it's such a guard. It's such it's such a um I don't I, I'm losing my word, but it's such a thing to be um held to a certain standard. So I would say social media and other platforms and anywhere a child goes and just like DJ just said, hearing it from maybe their, one of their parents, if someone disrespects you, then you have to do this. If someone disrespects you, you have to do that. Mm -hmm. But what, what qualifies as disrespect? Like what are they, what are you actually right. teaching disrespect right. is? And I think that that's where we need, where the teaching of the parents need to come in. What is actual disrespect? Because if I do something to you and you in turn call me a name, let's say you call me a dum dum or a dummy, we're gonna censor everything. Wow. And, <laughs> let's say you call me a dum dum, and and I and I get outraged about that, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're disrespecting me. What's well, real disrespect? You know, if I said something bad to you first, it would only be normal human nature for that person to come back at you, right? And so I think a lot of the times when the children are taking this to their parents and they say, mom or dad, whomever they live with, this is what happened to me today. I think instead of the uh, parent jumping the gun right away and saying, you don't let so-and-so do that to you. You don't let so-and-so say that to you. Why don't we figure out the whole situation? Why don't we say, well, what was your part in it? What did you do? Why, 
why did so and so just call you a dumb dumb? Why? Mm -hmm. So really, you can look at it and say that respect and disrespect is subjective. It really, yes. it really, it really depends on the circumstance, the situation, how you perceive it, and all of that kind of stuff. So, and especially like I say, I tend to keep bringing this back to the community that I grew up in. I don't know why everybody wants to hear me talk about the white community because I didn't grow up in the white community, so I don't know what white folks are like out there, right? You know what I'm saying? Uh so. I talk from my personal experience. My personal experience is the black experience, is the hood experience, is the gang experience, is the pick your own pick your own switch to get your ass whoop uh, generation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go go get me a thicker belt generation. That belt is too thin generation. You know what I'm saying? So invisible girls on that one, man. So this 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 is the thing that I want I wanted to kind of ask you because. My biggest thing is the spanking, the hitting, because I'm sorry, but we, we've been taking this thing too far for too long, and now it's just we're able to get information out there a lot quicker, and the fact that you're seeing a lot of these kids are dying, but let's just say for the kids that, like Tommy says, that survive, quote-unquote, survive their childhood. That could mean a number of different things. Kids are getting starved. Kids are getting beat. Kids are getting talked about. Kids are going through so much stuff that we tend to not talk about or we might not even pay attention to just because we're around this person every day, especially as parents, we tend to, we tend to take a blind eye to things, especially when they're in our face all the time. Yes. Yes. So, so absence doesn't make the heart grow fonder. If that thing is around us all the time, we don't have any absence of it. So we, a lot of times I know, I mean, I know we love our kids, but sometimes we don't really, really pay attention to our kids the way that we need to. Right. Yeah. So my question to you, is with regard to hitting and spanking and whooping and stomping or whatever you want to call it or standing in the corner, these harsh ass punishments, what are we really getting from this? And how does that relate to depression? Because I think that that can cause a person to be in a deep depression because I have a personal story I can tell you after you answer that. But I think that physical violence, hands, feet, objects, and other things hitting your children or putting them through harsh situations can actually harm them emotionally um i feel that? like that is definitely a part of, i heard tommy say that too i definitely feel like that is a part of surviving a childhood and i do feel like that when you go when a child goes through those things if a child is raised up in a household with abuse even if we feel like it's not abuse abuse because if they're getting hit on that much then they're probably getting verbally attacked as well. And so I don't feel like I don't feel like it's right because I think that most of the parents that are having children when they're doing this hitting as a punishment or as a correction for the child, they are doing it not out of sincere I want to stop you from doing this and I want you to learn from this experience but out of frustration. So it turns into abuse. It turns into the stories that you um, go live for every day talking about how a child passed away because her mother or his father beat him to death or the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't agree with it at all. I feel like a child, you know, I'm not saying a child shouldn't be corrected. So I don't want anybody to think that, oh my God, she's like her mom. She lives under, you know, daisies under a rock. I do feel like children should be corrected because I do feel like children, they can, they can grow uh, to kind of manipulate, um, if you will, if to get their way, to have their way. But I don't think that you should just whoop your children. I, I, I don't, I don't believe in that. I don't think that you should just outright, you know, throw a punch or, or anything like that. I do believe that they should be corrected. And I do believe that you should figure out some way, uh, to show them that what they did was wrong, but just to flat out beat them. I don't believe in that. Right. So let me ask you this, cause maybe, maybe I'm not the, the brightest crayon in the box, but this is what, this is what I want to know. What exactly are you supposed to gain from spanking? Please explain that. Cause somebody earlier in the chat, I can't remember who exactly it was cause I'm not a, a great tra chat reader. But somebody, okay. somebody said there's a difference between spanking and abuse. To me, it's synonymous. What are you supposed I, to gain from spanking? What What's supposed to be accomplished? I don't think that there's anything that p can be gained because we have to realize that children are little new people. So 
they have defense mechanisms. And I think that we stunt their growth mentally when we are constantly hollering, when we are constantly hitting, when we are constantly showing them that we're the big bad aggressor, we form these little boys and these little girls that then go into public and they can't look someone in the eye and speak to them. They don't know, you know, a sense of direction. They don't know how to act in public. If someone speaks passionately, they don't know how to respond because they're reverted back to, oh my gosh, I remember when all my mother did was holler. I remember when all my father did was holler. I remember if I said that wrong or if I did that wrong, I got hit. So you get these people that don't know how to act as adults because of this harsh corporal, I would say, abuse that they received as a child. So I don't believe that getting anything from a spanking is actually valid. I don't I don't feel like there's anything to gain but the child but the child feeling like what did I do and what can I do to not get that question but still here and know that it's coming. I have a question. Mm-hmm. When it comes to spanking, when you well you might not well maybe you can't relate to this because maybe you didn't get, get spanked or anything. In my in my opinion or or more or less I'm trying to ask a question. Are you supposed to learn respect from spanking? or fear from spanking? I think the parent is, it, it, I, and, if, I, and, I, and if so, why would you respect getting hit? <laughs> exactly. I think the parent's goal is to learn, is for them to learn r- respect, but it's confusing. I think that if it's confusing and conflicting to us, just imagine how the child feels. You because know, if, because it, is- if you think about it in life, where else do you get you get hit if you don't do what I tell you to do? You don't do the right things. Where else do gonna, you get hit at? You're not going to go to a job and your boss is like, you get your butt in my office right now. I'm spanking you like you're getting a whooping. Like <laughs> what? What job? What job does like it would be weird. Do, do, um, have you have you ever heard of the police spanking people, putting them over their knee and giving them a spanking? Why don't, why don't, if it was, if it was such a good thing, why don't the police do that? Hey, pull over. You're getting a whooping. You were speeding. So I've actually, I've actually seen where, when, when police officers have just verbally tried to discipline kids, like people is, is, is irate about it. They're acting a fool about it. Imagine if, if police seeing kids doing some wild and crazy stuff and, and they grabbed them to the side, took off they, they police belt, which is probably about two inches thick and whoop the hell out them kids. If whooping they, was they, okay. They would, they would sue the whole damn police the whole, system. Yeah, they would sue the whole force. Everybody would be in trouble. Um, But I mean, that's, that's just that double standard of thinking. And that's just what I want, what I really want people to just get away from. And if they take anything from this show tonight, just learning that, we as parents, I think that we we have to grow with our children, not in a sense that, oh, grow with them, you know, and, and befriend them, but grow in knowing that we constantly have to learn. We constantly have to watch them because they're changing in different stages of their life. And just like we adults, we evolve. Um, you know, we evolve from age and our mental growth evolves. The, ch- the children are doing the same thing. So teaching has to grow with them. We can't take a 17-year-old and treat them the same as we did when they were five. We that's, can't. Wait, wait, and see, and, that, and that's my point, because if they're under your roof, and I think I said this the other day, and I don't think I really got a, a valid response from anybody in the comments or in the live chat about this. So, because if it's such a good thing, why would you not whoop somebody that's 15, 16, 17, 18, or 19 that still lives under your roof? That's right. And, and then you'll, you'll say your, your butt's as big as mine. You know, you, you're, you're as grown as me. But then when that same child that you just made that statement to come to you and challenges you and says, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't feel like I have to do that because some of the things that we have our children do, we have to learn, well, why are we still asking them to do that? Not saying that they should get older and be able to get lax and do whatever they want. Absolutely not. Now it's time to roll them into different responsibilities. 
I'm talking about, you know, their responsibilities, you know, grow. So it's no longer go put your toys in your toy box or you're not going to get to watch the Disney Channel, which I hope no one's watching the Disney Channel, not a fan <laughs> of it. But, <laughs> but it now, okay, you didn't mow the lawn. You know, I, I gave you, you know, this this fake bank account to figure out so you can figure out your money and things like that. It's rolling them into different responsibilities that are going to help them grow and be good humans because we have to realize that teachers have our children for a large part of of the day. They have Ooh, them for That's something else I definitely want to talk about. Go ahead. I'm I'm taking notes right now. So I'm I'm writing okay. my notes down so I can talk about that later. Go ahead. I'm just okay, confused. so they have them for a, a vast majority of the day. So we essentially are like the second parent. We get our kids on the weekend. And then if our children are tied up in sports, which my children were tied up in a lot of things. And so even on the weekends, we're doing things for the school because they're tied up in the school. My my 13-year-old uh, just got inducted into the Junior Honor Society here in our city. And so she's just doing a lot of things. So we have to learn how to teach them to go into different directions, you know, and in, into a different role in life. So right. that's my thought. So this, this is what I want to talk about because I, I think there's a great topic. And again, for the people that are listening, you are listening to Lyric Speaks, who is on the right-hand side of the screen. This is DJ Just Jays. You guys should be a little bit familiar with me. If you guys are not, then that's perfectly fine. We uh, we have a channel called the uh, the Soto Podcast, which you guys can check out also. Also, shout out to my brother Tommy Soto Mayor and everybody else that's a part of the network, Michi X, Lady La, Relationship Rehab. Um, oh, uh, uh, shit. Uh, what's my guy's name? Um, mm, I forget his name. What's, what's my... Storm. Sorry. My apologies, yeah. Storm. Shout out to you, bro. My memory is really, really horrible. I forget my own name sometimes, right? So this is the thing. Nat B asked a couple of questions and I'm gonna try to pick out some of you guys' questions. I'm gonna copy and paste them in my notes because I, I definitely wanna make sure that not only we talk about these things and we, we're, that we, we ain't even really gotten to the meat of what we wanna discuss, which is a good thing. That's a good thing, right? So teachers having the kids for the vast majority of the day, I definitely wanna touch on that, but I wanna talk about something that Nat B asked because I like questions. If you guys don't understand something, you can type it in the chat and ask your questions if you really don't understand. If I say something that sounds crazy, I promise you, I've been saying this stuff probably since I was about 19 or 20 years old when I used to uh, be a camp counselor. There was a lot of things that we learned and a lot of values that we learned that I think that helped us to not only be able to deal with a bunch of random kids that are probably gonna have a bunch of different personalities and things like that, but it also was, was, a, was a safe environment for them and an environment that was conducive to allow them to listen and grow and all of that kind of good stuff. So he asked, what tools uh, are used to teach discipline? First of all, we have to understand, let me see, what do you say? Uh, your mentor, your memoir is, I don't know what, uh, Chevelle, I don't know what you said. I don't know what you said. I don't get what you said, but you might, might have to rewrite it for me. I didn't quite catch that or maybe I'm not reading it right. But um, tools, first and foremost, very basic words, very basic things. First and foremost is communication. It is absolutely yes. ridiculous the fact that people will say that kids should be hurt, should be seen and not heard. That's retarded. Sorry, it's freaking retarded. What do you mean kids should be seen and not heard? That's dumb. Because how are they supposed to grow their communication skills if you don't allow them to talk, right? The first person that they should be talking to is who? The parents. So if you establish that bond from day one and the first words they learn to say is mama, dada, awesome. Then you continue to keep going from there and they're supposed to be the people that they communicate with the most is the people they trust the most, which should be the people that are raising them, right? So communication is very, very key. It works even for relationships. I think that the uh, the building blocks and some of the things that tear down a relationship is communication. Like that to me, whenever I'm in a relationship, that's one of the first things that I notice if this thing is gonna go somewhere or not, if we're having a bunch of lulls in conversation, if we ain't talking about shit, we around each other and we ain't having no conversations or we, we constantly ain't on the same page. If our communication skills are horrible, it, it generally 
will deem that that relationship is not is not a good relationship. Okay, right. and the same thing relates to your kids. Relationships are merely just the interactions that you have with each individual person. You can have a relationship with anybody. You can have a relationship with, you know, if you guys are religious, you can have a relationship with God, right? So <clears throat> that's one way. I believe that kids should have a voice. Kids should be heard. Kids should absolutely be heard. Their voices matter. This talks about our topic, as you guys can see from the screen and the thumbnail that we're talking about depression and children having voices. That's one of the key things that affects depression. Why do you guys think that they go and go see these psychologists? And what's the first thing they ask them to do? Talk. Sit them on the couch. What's the point of the couch? To be relaxed and talk. That's right. And, and. Sarah in the comment section, Sarah, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get to see your last name, but she said each child is different. I absolutely agree. What DJ was uh, talking about, about communication, that's key. If you are a parent that understands how important communication is in learning your child, I think a lot of parents miss learning who their little people are. And they, when we miss that step, when we miss not understanding what the child is going through because they may be going through stuff that we're telling them they're not going through. When my son started suffering through depression and suffering through sadness and when he told me when it formed or when and when it took root in his life, it saddened me because I am a huge communicator and I I love them so much and I am a mother of five. So I, I totally agree with you, Sarah, when you say every child is different because they do have their own different little personalities and you do have to pay attention to those personalities and you do have to approach each child differently. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we should be able to talk to them and not come at them forcefully. There are times for force because I get forceful. There's times when I'm like, look, you've crossed the line and we we need to talk about this and i'm I, i'm speaking you know to them more passionately uh, or more loudly um but right right but but this this is the thing that i, I want to make sure and establish is when we're talking about those kind of things when we talk about like the rules and regulations we want to make sure and establish some very very key things and you can tweak them as necessary right so just making sure that we establish that communication is key now now we, let me see Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, I seen I'm seeing them words. Those words are throwing me off in the chat. But um, but again, when we're when we're talking about um the uh, what did what did he say? The tools is 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 being communication. Well, you can use that tool however you need to in order to to create a product from that tool, right? So whether you need someone to go in this direction or that direction or however it is, or if you need that person to express themselves. How you deal with each person is definitely going to be different. How you utilize the tool of communication. Yes, how you utilize it. And also another tool to me can be them understanding re a reward. Mm -hmm. I think children nowadays are overly rewarded. If you are not making good grades, if you have become a smart aleck child, if you, ha if you have grown with, uh, you know, talking back and things of this nature. And, and this is something that the parent needs, you know, to monitor and things like that. I think we forget to be, I don't think, I feel like a lot of parents forget to be consistent. If you tell a child that they can't have something or they can't do something, the follow up with that needs to be consistent and it needs to stay on it. If I told you no, if I told you you were going to be on punishment for a week, if I explained why you were on that punishment for a week, I can't go back on that. I can't then within that week take you out to eat, let you watch movies, buy you new clothes, buy you new shoes, you know, redecorate your room. We have to stay consistent in what we're telling our children so that they can learn when they go on to jobs when they're in school, if their boss gives them something to do or gives them a deadline, that they are able to follow through and understand the importance of following through and then the reward at the end. Right. And this is another thing that a lot of people may not realize is very, very important to the development of children. And this, is, this should be an ongoing thing. 
I know everybody's situation is different, but we're talking about literally tools that you can use in order to build better children, build better people in general. I've, I've always thought it was weird when parents will tell a, a child to do something, give a child a particular task. And then when that child asks, well, why, why do I need to do that? Because I said so. Is that not a very common answer from the, you know, from, I mean, from when we grew up, that was a very, very common answer. Cause I told you to, you can't question me. And, and my, my whole thing is I thought about that as, as I grew up and now I'm raising a different generation of kids. I have a different understanding. And I know I was one of those kids that grew up wondering, well, why the hell can I ask? Why can't I know why? I don't want to just do a task, be given something, some menial work and not know the reason behind it. Well, okay. I agree with that. I feel like why is very important. I do feel like why is very important. Now, if the child takes it to the extreme and they're like, why, 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 why? You know, uh, but, but, but this is this is the thing. And, and I, and I want to I want to capitalize on what you just said. They can take it to the extreme. But mm -hmm. one thing parents have to stop doing is they have to stop struggling. Stop having this power struggle with your kids. Like, like, why do you have to debate I'm the one in power? Like, what the fuck? Like, you ain't got to debate that I'm the parent. I'm the one that runs shit. You don't. But truly people who are realize that they in power and that they have power don't need to tell you that they have power. You just are. You just do it. It's just you. You know what I'm saying? And you don't have to... I've, I loved, I've always loved this saying, and maybe somebody's heard this before, right? You don't have to inflict damage to project strength. It's a, right. it's a beautiful thing. You don't have to inflict damage to project strength. And me as a parent, that's the thing that I represent with my daughter. Because I remember my daughter was having a hard time with her mom. And her mom called me. I said, all right, well, I'm about to come through. I was already on my way to the city. And I walked in the door and you could tell my daughter had been worked up a sweat. I'm up and made her mad about something. And she come out and I'm calling her. She not coming out. And eventually she walked her little slow feet self out there. She eventually came on out. And so I, I, I walked, she walked in, finally came up to me. I said, come here, come here. She walked over to me. And the first thing I said to her was, hi, baby, how you doing? And she, hmm. I'm like, you doing okay? She was like, mm. I was like, you know, your daddy loves you, right? She's like, yes. I was like, okay, well, what's wrong, baby? What's wrong? Tell me what's wrong. So I gave her, first of all, I gave her love first because what do I want in return? Love. Right. Do I want an asshole? If I, if I want an asshole in return, then I would treat her like an asshole, right? So mm -hmm. daddy gave her love and respect first. I allowed her to come to me when she was ready to come to me. And I greeted her with love first. So then I oh, that opened up the door for conversation. Now she's not mumbling anymore. Now she's talking. What's wrong? She tells me what's wrong. And I said, okay, cool. I understand where you're coming from. And I thank you for being honest with me. Every kid is different. I know that ain't gonna work with every kid, but we're talking about the methods. You have to allow for that communication to stand. And if a, and if, and if a kid doesn't understand something, you don't want them to live in that frustration. Yes. You don't want them to live in the frustration of not knowing and having to participate or do something that they don't want to do. Cause so imagine this shout out to my ladies out there. How many ladies do we have in the chat? How many ladies do we have out there that have literally did something for a man just because that man coerced them into doing some dumb shit. Mm. Mm -hmm. Didn't give an answer. Didn't give a reason. We just do it just because we believe that if an authority figure tells us to do something, we should acquiesce. Am I lying or am I just spitting a bunch of hot air right now? You're not lying. So this is the thing, especially as raising our daughters, my daughter will understand the value of getting answers. It ain't nobody going to tell her to do a damn thing. And she's not going to understand at least the reason why you understand so I believe that it is very important for children to understand the why, and you make sure that they have that understanding up until the furthest point of understanding. Once you reach the end of that rope of understanding, now it's about doing. Right. We, can, we can absolutely still get kids to do those things that we need them to do, whether it's to clean up their room, go take a bath, whatever it is, but check this out. At the end of the day, we are the ones that still provide them 
the food, the water, the clothing, the shelter, the shelter, the video games, the cell phone, the whatever it is. There is something that those kids are going to want or going to want to do or they're going to want to go someplace that you're going to need to help them to get to or they're going to want to participate in an activity that you have to get them to. You don't have to physically put your hands, feet or other objects on kids in order to get them to do what it is that you want them to do. Why? Because they're still going to need you for certain things and you can scale back on some things. They still yes. need to eat. They still need to sleep in a bed. Maybe you don't have to go out and go get them the, the, the Chinese food that they asked for. Maybe we're gonna have sandwich and chips. You don't wanna eat that? It's still your choice. And this is one thing that I was, I can't remember who I was talking about uh, with this to the other day. With, with regard to, oh, I was talking to Kurt Dog earlier today about this. It's amazing. It is amazing what hunger will make you do. Yeah. I was telling him this story about a, about, about a dude that I considered to be a friend of mine. And he told me this sob ass story, right? And in order to coerce me into doing something, well, maybe he didn't want me to do something, but he gave me the sob story. And when people give me a sob story, especially when they tell me they haven't eaten or anything like that, that hits a, that hits a place in my heart, in my chest, right? That sparks mm. something in me because I cannot stand to see somebody not be able to eat. So you tell me some stuff like that, I'm gonna try to help you out, right? So my whole thing with, with telling that story is because I know what that does to you mentally. It drains on you, especially when you not only can't eat or eat the things that you wanna eat. You could put food in front of those kids and say, you know what? We, we not gonna go out for crab legs and stuff like that. Or we not gonna go to the to the Golden Corral and you just have it your way and all of this kind of good stuff. We not gonna go and go get this fancy uh, 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 fast food meal that you wanna go get from your favorite place. What we are gonna do is we're gonna provide you the essentials. Wanna make sure that you have water and we wanna make sure that you have meat and bread. You will live peanut butter and jelly, whatever it takes, but that will suffice and that will settle your stomach hunger. It will Perfect. work. So the thing, so the thing is, is you want to make sure and feed the kids. You don't starve the kids, but that don't mean that you have to go, you know, give them anything special. You can give them something very basic. And how creative can you get with food? Uh oh, uh oh. Did Just Jay just say some real shit right about now? Uh oh. <laughs> I think that I want to piggyback on that you said um, in the beginning of your uh, story was, you know, when she walked out with her slow feet and, you know, and she was down and, and she was sad because of what had the interaction that had went on with her and her mother. That's another thing that I think that parents have to allow their children to do. And that's to feel like, let me be mad. Let me be sad. Like, I have seen parents get on a child for getting mad because you hollered at them or getting mad. I'm not saying that the child should get mad and pout because you didn't give them something that they wanted. But if you hurt their feelings or if you sadden them, I feel like they should be allowed to be sad. Like they should be allowed to feel. Yes. They should be allowed to understand what it feels like to be happy and to be sad and to and and this made me mad and stuff like that should be explained to them they sh that shouldn't be taken away and i feel like that this is a key factor to them falling into a depression because if you don't let them feel and then all these feelings hit them at once and they don't know what to do you've created a time bomb so i i feel it's very important to let the kids feel and i know that's kind of straight off of your story but when you said that when you described that to me all i was thinking was he let her feel and then he was able to coach her back into her normal self her normal happiness but you let her be sad and that yes. was good because she needed to feel that moment and understand how to get over it. If we don't understand, if we don't learn coping mechanisms, if we don't understand how to get over things, it guys like the guy you talked about that threw that little boy off the balcony. Yes. You don't understand your emotions. You don't understand how to get over anything. Your parents didn't install something correct in you for you to just throw a little baby to his death. That's right. Well, he didn't die. Yes, did he, he die? I, um, yes, I think he did. 
Um, that 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 was the uh, uh I I forget Aldana. Al Donna no we'll, we'll we'll look it up we'll look it up we'll look it up yeah but yeah I I just when you said that that just struck a chord in me because I I believe now more so than ever then let your kids feel let them and and then and then learn you know all, to all the parents out there learn how to let them feel love you know I, I'm not saying force things on them but. Hey, if my child looks like they need a hug, you can, my children, 22, 19, 17, and 13, you're all getting a hug from me. If I haven't seen you all day, I'm hugging you. Mm -hmm. Like you're telling me about your day. I want to know how you feel. I want to know what's going on. So, and, yeah. and, and even that could be used as a tool. It's, it's, an, it's even an important tool just as us being human beings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree with that. So just kind of moving on to other topics, we, we kind of touched on a little bit of everything. But um, I want to say that when I touched on us growing as parents, when I when I talk about that, I'm talking about there's things that I feel like no adult has arrived. I feel like there are some very smart human beings out there and there are some very smart parents out there. And I feel like there's always something that we can grab from others or that we can grab from our daily lives and insert that into our parenting skills. Because even when our children are going from the adolescent stage, you know, on into adulthood and things of that nature, they're still teaching and stuff that we have to do to them. I don't ever feel like a parent's job is completely over. I know that there's a time where we have to just, you know, let go and let them do, but I don't feel like our job is always completely over. So I feel like there's still tools that we as adults and as their parents, we can learn to help guide them into brighter futures. What do you think about that, DJ? I, I like I like what you said. I definitely like what you said. Um, with regard to, and, and, and this, this is another thing. I mean, like how many of us really, when we talk about guiding our kids, how many of us really even know what our kids want to do, what they're interested in? Yeah. I'm just saying like, like that's, that's something very simple. And, and all we're talking about is just asking people to take either some physical notes or some mental notes of just some things to at least think about. Cause I believe that most of us in the chat are parents. If not, then, you know, once we get to that point, then maybe we'll, we'll, you know, you'll be able to reflect on some of these things. You know what I mean? But I definitely think that we should take a vested interest in the things that they're interested in. There are things that mm -hmm. we, there, there, there are some very vital things that we should know. We should know what type of games they like to play, what type of conversations they like to have, what type of friends do they have, what type of things do they enjoy, what type of sports, what type of food, what type of whatever it is, what their interests are. You know what I mean? And we ought to be able to take the things that we know about our kids and be able to put um, the advantages that they can gain in life in front of them so they can start using that now and start using that as a tool in order to build themselves, whatever it is. I think sports is probably the easiest um, analogy to make when it comes to uh, things that you can put in front of your kids. You know what I'm saying? But but uh, but nonetheless, um, I, 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 li I like what you said. I, li I like, um, you know, where you're going with that. So I don't, I don't really want to say too much else about that, but that's what I had to say about that. So, and I totally agree with you. And to piggyback off of you, I don't think that, you know, I feel like a lot of the times, um, and we and we can accidentally do this. We can accidentally deplete our children's stimuli. And what I mean by that is if they are playing video games, of course, there there is a certain time frame that we should keep them in. But if they sh if they have dreams, we shouldn't crush what is exciting them, what what is um <laughs> In them into the future. If your child comes to you and says, you know what, mom, or you know what, dad, I want to be a painter. Like, I want to paint the world. And we say, well, that's dumb. Like, painters don't make that much money. Mm -hmm. And then that child walks away like, oh my God, my dream was dumb. Like, this whole time, my heart has been set on being a painter. And I really thought I was going to rule the world with my paintbrush. And my mom, my parents, just told me that it was dumb. Mm. Let me uh, let me say this real quick. I don't know why that name looks familiar in the chat. I know that name, but somebody in the chat um, said, I tell her every day she could be anything that she wants. I like that. I know it's a loving thing to say, 
But how about this? How about we reconsider that statement and say, what do you want to be? And let's push you towards that theme. Are there some things that you're interested in? Let's let's give them a, a sense of direction. And that's also part of what, uh, what, what comes in being a parent is find out what it is that they want to do give them a nudge in that direction or give them some things that they can, that they can use to start moving in that direction. Give them right. a, whether, whether that be, you know, a class, there's a lot of things that kids can actually learn early on. Like I didn't even realize this, that, um, that they have a lot of, uh, Voltec, Metro tech and stuff like that. The kids can get into while they're like, like early on in high school and stuff like that. I was like, damn, if I would have known about some of this stuff and a lot of it is either subsidized, if not free, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? school even things in middle school if you do have a child out there that wants to be a painter there are so many things that you can do especially going to your local museum they do so many different things with arts um even lowe's lowe's literally does so many things with arts like just I so did they not, can i did not know that just so they can show them the different ways that paint works and stuff they will help them build like bird houses because you know you can take paint into so many different levels but just getting into your community um learning like what your community does like no one reads the newspaper anymore but i love the newspaper because we got the newspaper and, and we strayed away from it because the children are bigger now and they no longer think it's exciting sometimes they do but literally each day what it was like a national day for something so we all would wear silly socks because it was national silly sock day mm. or national donut day or national dog day and this gave us things to talk about because i'm like oh my gosh it's national pillow day i'm taking a pillow everywhere with me today and i would literally ask the kids when i seen them what did your pillow do today you know just growing their imagination growing them who they are as a person and just letting them have a voice is so key. I, I know no parent is perfect. I know there's some parents out there that we miss a lot of steps, but learning how to grow and getting those steps back and rekindling relationships that you'll have with people that you brought to this earth, I don't think that there's anything like it. So. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I, I was just looking at something that was written. I was wanting to make sure that I didn't take it out of context before I go tripping on somebody, right? So let me see. How do you teach someone uh, yeah. discipline? Um, okay, okay. Let me uh, let me comment on this um, because um, I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier and that asked, how do you teach someone discipline? And the difference between discipline and, and abuse is a very, very th fine line. And what we have to do is we have to start separating actions certain actions and realize that certain actions are deemed to be abusive and realize what's actually constructive for kids. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so with regard to that, like I say, one of those key things that you could take away from discipline is hitting. That's not discipline. You don't hit anybody because if that was the case, then, you know, there's, there's ways that you can control your relationship, but do you beat your wife? Do you, beat, do you beat your husband in order to get them to do what it is? Because, so if that's the case, then why would we beat somebody that's knee high to a fly? Like, it's just a weird thing for, for me to sit there and do these stories and listen to people talking about there was a good reason why they got this big old huge thick belt and spanked a one-year-old. Can a one-year-old even walk? You know what I'm saying? Like, damn. Like what lesson this, are you supposed to learn before you can even learn to talk? Like, you know, this, it's just a crazy thing. Go ahead. I'm listening. Things that happen. Oh, like oh, that. I'm sorry. And I wanted to say that I wanted to give credit to Island Girl. She said hitting is lazy parenting. I 100% agree. Go ahead. I feel like this is learned behavior. So yep. you, you, you took, you took that, that extra step to say, Hey, I'm a parent. I don't want to do my child like this. I'm not going to whoop. I, I took the same step. You know, I didn't, I said, well, I, I want to talk, you know, I, I'll take communication from my mom, but what one, I'll take it a little step further and I will insert discipline because I don't know if she didn't think that discipline, you know, wasn't okay. She disciplined, but it was still, she still felt like, oh, maybe I might discipline you too much and you won't love me 
anymore. And I just felt like that just wasn't a right way to go as a parent. I felt like she should, if look, stand your ground. If you told me, no, I can't have the cookie, don't come and bring me 10 cookies later, shaped like smiley faces and say, I didn't mean to tell you no. Like, oh, right, right. That, 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 that never made any sense to me. I think for me, I just wanted to be a good kid. So I was a good kid, but I, it, I could have went all the way left because Everything was sunshine and daisies to her. So for me, I am that parent that if I tell you no, no means no. Like I, I've given you the reason why I told you no. And if you if you go that next step and you do it anyway, then I'm like you, DJ. Hey, don't ask me to take you to that soccer game. You know, you're you're sitting out. I'm I'm calling your coach. I I'm getting the coach and everybody involved. He's sitting out. He can't he can't participate. So, you know, that's the steps that I want, you know, that I have taken and that I feel like those are good disciplines because if you just outright go for hitting, what do they learn other than to be angry with you? Like, we don't want our children to survive their childhood to the point where when they become parents, you have a lot of adults that they're like, I don't speak to my mother. I don't speak to my father. You know, I don't, I don't talk to them because they went through so much as a child and they finally got to a happy place as an adult that they don't want to have anything to do with their parents. And I just don't want that. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to talk about this before we wrap up. Um, and again, I'd like to thank everybody that is listening to us. We got a little bit more to cover real quick before we let everybody go. Again, this is Lyric Speaks. We are on the Voltron Network. If you guys are not familiar with Voltron, then what we do here is we bring a bunch of different people to the platform in order to uh, to bring content, our ideas, our thoughts, you know, the things that we feel like are interesting and stuff like that. So you're going to see more, more uh, people on this particular network. Shout out to my brother, Tommy Sotomayor. Now, this this one thing that I wanted to also talk about. Because I, I don't I don't know if you were going to cover this or not, if it's in your notes, but I wanted to talk about this. To all the people that are out there, if you still have school age children, do not underestimate the value of a parenting class. Uh oh, I believe that there's always something you can learn. And there's a real quick story I'm going to tell you guys. My dad had been riding motorcycles since he was a kid he knows those bikes like the back of his hand worked on bikes worked in shops and stuff like that so he knows motorcycles he took a motorcycle class and said he was actually surprised that he learned something it's amazing as much as we think that we know we can always learn and we shouldn't have so much pride that we can't step back and say hey even i can learn something you know what I'm saying? Because you'll never be a perfect parent. So why not take a step, a step, one step in order to make sure that we can give our kids just a little bit better version of ourselves. And there's a number of different things that can do it. Like I told you guys, I think, uh, I think you can check in the workforce, um, in your local workforce. I think that they offer parenting classes. They offer online uh, uh, parenting classes that are very low cost. Um, I think they have some co-parenting classes for $25. They have some uh, some easy online parenting classes. Um, they also have uh, parenting classes that some of the churches have. So maybe you guys can check in with some of your churches. I don't know if you guys are religious or not, but you can at least take advantage, not only of parenting classes, but you can also take it. I think you gotta be a member of the church in order to take care of, uh, take advantage of the, uh, the, uh, the, marriage co uh, the marriage counseling, if I'm not mistaken, but just throwing that out there. But there are a number of different things that I was looking at. There's a lot of different, um, Things if you just type in parenting classes, so it gives reasons why you should take the class. Um, it, it tells people, uh, it gives uh, some testimonials from some people and stuff like that. But I believe that anything that we can take that that can make us a better person, a better parent, I think that we should utilize it. And that'd be a simple way to do it, especially if everybody's watching us on YouTube right now. For as much time as we spent on here, you could utilize that same type of time and take a parenting class online. Your thoughts, Miss Lyric? I feel the exact same way. And I just want to take this time to say that um, I actually did kind of touch on that, you know, growing and changing as the parent. So parenting classes are excellent. I want to take this time to just say, if you see your child becoming an introvert, especially when they used to be bubbly and outgoing. If you see them, 
you know, not, you know, just not engaging or just moping or just if they're trying to tell you that they're unhappy, I want you to take the time to listen. I want you to take the time to understand where they're coming from and not judge them. You know, some in that particular situation, you ask the parent, why isn't appropriate? Just trying to find out what's going on and how you guys can move forward. And I want you to take the step to try to get them help because we as parents, we're not the end all answer to everything. Just because they're our child, it doesn't mean that we have a definite answer that's going to cover everything. We do need to uh, reach out to outsource help. And then after we find out that they are in a state of unhappiness, we need to then figure out how to parent them from that standpoint, not how to parent them as they were prior to coming up with this problem. You know, not I won't even call it a problem, but coming up with this situation because we can either help them fall into the situation more or grow out of it and still blossom into a wonderful um, adult. Mm -hmm. I like it. Um, what, what else did you want to cover here? Because... Um... Because we, we talked about a lot of things that can contribute to um, to depression as far as children having voices. I think we covered a lot of stuff. What else did you want to cover? Because like I said, I tend to take notes. I, you know, I'm not good with going off, off the off the head about anything. That's kind of my thing. So what 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 else did you want to cover? Did we did we cover everything? We want to hear your thought. I think we cover everything. But real quick, I want to hear your thoughts on how do you feel about parents listening just to have that quick response and shun the child away instead of listening to actually understand what they're going through I because think, you went over that really quickly i think a lot of that has to do with just us caring as parenting you have to care enough to pay attention to your kids and one of the things that you could do what we used to learn in school that's called active listening yes you know and it's it's a it's a it's an easy enough thing to do, but it's something you have to want to do. And I think a lot of people, there are just moments when you're parenting. If you're around those kids, a lot of the, a lot of the hours of the day, you don't want to actively listen. But again, that's also why I believe that we shouldn't recklessly reckless recklessly procreate. That's the word I'm trying to say. We shouldn't recklessly procreate. And bring children into this world just simply because we can collect the benefits from those kids. Because if you truly want to be a good parent, it comes with a hell of a lot of responsibility. And one of those things is listening and understanding and caring emotionally, phys physically, spiritually for a kid, even in moments when you don't want to. That's it's right. a lot that goes with it. So even for the people that already got kids, maybe take a step back and say, Maybe maybe we need to not create more if we really don't grasp that concept or if we're or if we're having difficulty dealing with that with the kids that we already got now. Because the more you have kids, all you're doing is just taking away more resources and taking away more time from any other kids that you have. That's right. And I think that to piggyback off of that, I think that a parent's mistake at, at having a child um, and they didn't want to, that it was just an act of them having sex. Mm -hmm. Your mistake is not that child's downfall or that it's not that child's fault. So they shouldn't be treated as if it was their fault. That was your fault that you made and they shouldn't have to pick up the pieces because you feel like you were broken because of having that child. Um, and I think that that's where a lot of, because a lot of, a, a lot of women, I'm pretty sure now have, have known or if you don't know, when when we're pregnant with children, our emotions that we carry with us during this pregnancy proceeds with that child. So if you are feeling very, very pregnant and going through a lot of sadness and things, that's a baby that you're going to want to monitor once they come to this earth. Because we essentially put all those spirits on that baby. Um, and a lot of people don't believe in that type of stuff, but it's very much true. You have to treat children lovingly. So I just, if, if, if the child was a mistake to you, it, you know, just don't treat the baby that way because I feel like that's what a lot of parents do. And again, I think that's where that corporal punishment comes in because I feel like parents are whooping out of lazy parenting, but also out of their own frustrations, not really because of something the child did. Mm -hmm. 
All right. I was putting my chat in, or I said my chat, I put my email address in the chat and I was directing it to a particular person, but I'll say this to anybody, especially for people that don't, don't understand the concepts that we just talked about or the reasons that we gave. Not only can I further explain them to you, but if you have a personal situation that even if the things that we talked about didn't really get your mind mentally where you feel like it needs to be, then you could absolutely take up my time. I do respond, even though I got a ton of emails that that um, that I do get about people sending stories and things like that. I will definitely respond to those. If I can respond to them in the comment section, I'll definitely respond to an email. I'd be more than happy to help anybody because I'm going to tell you guys this. Sometimes it takes... Um, people like us in these positions where we do, where we feel like we do have some insight or sometimes it just takes a good friend to just hear you out in order to keep you from making a, a mental mistake, especially when it comes to our kids. I hope you guys caught that. Sometimes it just takes just that moment. Whenever we, they talk about, we just made a, a snap decision in a moment like that. Well, sometimes if we are able to either vent or if we're able to get clarity to those thoughts and sometimes be able to clean that up, we might actually be able to save one child on an emotional level or save their lives. And I definitely think that it's important. So I definitely try to take that responsibility to heart. But um, is it anything else that you want to cover, Miss Lyric? I think we covered it all. Yeah. So I, I'm absolutely thrilled and I wasn't sure really um, you know, how I was going to carry this particular topic, like I say, because it's a little bit outside of my normal format, but I am absolutely um, honored to um, to have you on here, not really to have you on here, for you to have me on here, I should say, to be able to be a part of your show, and I thank you for bringing this topic and organizing it and all of that kind of good stuff, and so so thank you for having me again, your name, and, and, and let them know about you, so, or, or whatever. So, once again, you guys, Thank you so much for joining the chat and just putting in all your wonderful comments and asking questions and just staying involved with the conversation. That was really exciting to see. And I just once again want to say hi to everybody in the chat um, and thank Tommy for allowing me to just be on this platform. I will only be able to be seen here on the Voltron Network. And I thank Tommy for giving me that um, opportunity. And I just always want to come to you guys with topics um, just re that are sensitive to me, that, you know, that mean a lot to me. And I hope that um, from this uh, moment forward that we can always just come into this network and have open discussions about things that we normally, you know, wouldn't talk about that we normally would bypass. And I think that uh, child depression is one of those things that we kind of brush over and act like it doesn't exist. So I hope this just opens the ground that all of you guys will just come and meet me here again. And um, we discuss things. I'm working out what day I want to do everything with, but I hope to see you all again. And I really, really thank you, DJ, for um, just coming on here and talking with me and just sharing all your excellent opinions and facts as well. I definitely be trying. Like I say, you know, I, I, I'm definitely honored uh, to be on here. Like I say, just just to be able to have the platform and to just be surrounded by a bunch of good people. Not only yourself, lyric, but relationship rehab, uh, Storm, Lady La, uh, my brother uh, Tommy Sotomayor, Michi X. I mean, so many people over here in, in Soto Nation. I can't name everybody in the chat, but um, for all the people that contribute to support our platform in a financial way or even just in, in, in a way where you guys just do something as simple as clicking the thumbs up. It really helps to share the stream and to continue to keep bringing people to this platform to let them know that we are here and we ain't going nowhere. We are not going to sit here and, and, and allow people to run us off. Like I say, we're, we're here to stay and I thank you guys. Oh, and, and that B, I'm sorry. You, you're absolutely right. My brother, Notorious B did a stream earlier today. Y'all make sure to check him out on the movie reviews, right? <laughs> Ah. Right, so I don't know if y'all watched it out there in the chat, but I definitely watched this. So you guys make sure and check out not only all the all of his shows, but make sure you check out the previous shows that are right behind that because I know Tommy uploaded a couple more on there as well. So just continue to support us, man. I want to say thank you uh, to somebody that made my phone buzz a minute ago, and that is by way of a name of Stacy T. I'm not going to put the entire name out there, but you know who you are. I want to say thank you very much, right? This is your boy DJ Just J signing off. The shirt for everybody wondering, L-Y-F-E stands for love yourself first every day. 
And that's where it starts right there, man. You can kill a whole lot of that depression, man, when you just love yourself, love life, and appreciate people, man. Love, peace, and blessings, man. I'm out. We'll see you guys on the next stream. All right, peace.